Well, this is Gary Pinnell, and I would like to welcome you to our Bible study, Bible-Christian.org. Today we will be in Matthew chapter 11. Now, I hope that you're enjoying the study, and if you are, please share it with other people. This is how you can be a missionary to others. Uh, one of the things that we do is try to go right through the New Testament in a year. Uh, also, if you're reading along with us, you'll be reading in Genesis right now, two chapters a day, and one in the book of Job. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and look at Matthew chapter 11, where it says, Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? All right, uh, this is tough, isn't it? Because now the reality of it is that John the Baptist was put in jail by Herod because John the Baptist was speaking out against Herod taking his brother's wife. Can you imagine that? They were already married, and uh, then he decides that he wants uh, her more than he wants his own wife and so it's his brother's wife so he just takes her now if seeing her life after this we know that she was involved in that wanted that to happen too she didn't want to be and in those days they would think about the power the riches and of course we don't think about the no <laughs> and these days too but it, that seems to take priority as the riches and the power that Herod had. He could do whatever, basically, he wanted to do. He could kill uh, those that he wanted to kill. And uh, remember, this is the son of the Herod that killed the babies in Bethlehem, around Bethlehem, all the baby boys up to two years old because he was afraid they would become king instead of his son. So now his son is following in his footsteps. He did listen to John and other gospels. You'll see that he listened some, but he always wanted a bribe. So he was listening for the wrong reasons, it seems. And then he actually ends up killing John the Baptist for the wrong reasons too. Uh, so it's a wicked man. But John made that clear. Now, uh, we are to speak out against sin in our time. Uh, here in the United States, when uh, Roe v. Wade, which is the court case that went before the Supreme Court some, uh, let's see, at least 50 years ago, maybe longer than that, was in place, there was like, 70 million babies that were killed as a result. Wicked, wicked decision. Now it's gone back to the States. But we're supposed to speak out against this. Look what happened in Germany when uh, things were uh, going wrong there and people were uh, putting the Jews on trains and taking them to death camps and the Holocaust took place. Well, how much did Christians speak out? There were some. And they were killed. And there's a famous pastor, and I've forgotten his name. But by and large, others, just as the trains went by, uh, the churches and their services were going on, they said, sing louder, sing louder, because they didn't want to hear the people screaming out for help from the trains and so on. You see, so we have that evil going on. Uh, we have the evil here in the United States of homosexuality and uh, immorality and all these different things 
and even if we say anything like on uh, like Facebook or YouTube sometimes uh, we will be censored and I was censored recently and I don't even know why uh, but they just said we don't meet their standards and so on so if for some reason I'm not on uh, messenger like I normally am on Facebook uh, usually it's cute they keep me from going to messenger and having very many uh, people uh, they, that's been limited for some time but and even me speaking out like this can cause it to go off uh, but I would suggest to you if for some reason I'm not on messenger please go to YouTube and on YouTube you will find us uh, you just put in my name or either put in the passage of scripture that we're having and uh, it usually takes about a half hour after we have the lesson here so on just a word of advice or also at uh, any time you can go to bible-christian.org i'll show you that what it looks like and there we are on and that's our own private website so that's usually will be on there but along with that uh you would go here right here to where it says news okay and then we put on uh like yesterday's there and you could go back a ways and so on if you're interested but also uh we have resources and free tracks i know i think that's a really uh, neat thing and so a whole lot of free tracks and many other uh, things on on our website bible-christian.org please go and check us out we have lessons like Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Romans, 1st 2nd Corinthians and uh, many Bible studies like that uh, that if you were uh, check that out and see so uh, but I will tell you that when we speak out against things on these, uh, not just myself, many other people that have been censored. And so it just it, if we're not on for some reason, you'll know where to go. Bible-Christian.org to the news and then also to YouTube. But anyway, uh, so in those days... Um, that was john was censored he was put into prison okay and then he was human just like you and i and that's something that james talks about in his book that uh that elijah even though we put them up on pedestals in other words think so highly of them we think of them like angels or something well they're wonderful people and so on but they were human like you and i and even elijah he ran away from queen the queen um he have and then his he didn't he wasn't afraid of ahab but jezebel when she said she was going to kill him he got out of there uh that's elijah and the bible says that he had a human nature just like you and i and the same thing of john the baptist he was uh what do you think uh he had questions, and even right here, he asked Jesus, are you really the one, you know, because he p couldn't understand why probably that he was put into jail if Jesus were really the Messiah. Now, can you imagine, I mean, what would you be like if you were put in a dungeon and rats are crawling over you and biting you and, uh, and uh, insects and all that sort of thing and here you were preaching and thousands and thousands of people had gotten right with the lord so yes he had his 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 question at a time of a doubt but uh, uh i know that he just gave it all to the lord after what uh, jesus said here because jesus sent back to uh, the disciples that had come to talk to him and, and notice what it says here again. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples who were still taking care of him while he was in jail and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said to them, 
Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it was written. <coughs> Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. <coughs> Excuse me. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay. Jesus, I believe, is saying that uh, if you're really believing, then you're going to take it with your whole heart. You're going to be very serious about it. You're going to go on and want to lead other people to the Lord. And John the Baptist led thousands upon thousands of the Jewish people to the Lord. And even though he didn't do any miracles, and he did prophesy about the coming one, uh, the Lamb of God, and just as Jesus, uh, as John said, Jesus came and so on. But he, as far as God was concerned, was a man that was greater than a prophet. And so he was used mightily of the Lord. But then he was also allowed to be martyred for the Lord. And just because a person is put in prison or whipped or hung or crucified or all the things that people do to Christians around the world, in fact, uh, there, there are groups that believe that they're doing God uh, favors by doing that to us. And I can't necessarily mention those names, but there are people that actually feel that way. And... Uh, so, and then there's those that are atheists and seeing nothing wrong with uh, doing what the government says to do to Christians. So we have those things today. And uh, there will be until the time that the Lord comes back and sets up his earthly kingdom. Of course, before that, the Lord will come for the church. And... Um, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there's not been uh, risen and so on. Let's see. And then we go to verse 13. For the prophets and the law prophesied until John. So the Old Testament was up to uh, John. And, uh, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. All right, so John was in the position of Elijah. Now, it doesn't say in the Old Testament what uh, his name would be uh, as far as the one that was preparing the way for, but John the Baptist was, John the Baptizer, was the one that was in the place of Elijah, in the stead of Elijah, and preparing the way before Jesus. But in the future, there will come, I believe, Elijah, and the actual Elijah. He didn't die. And uh, it's possible that Enoch, uh, too, we're not told 
who they will be, but it's a possibility here. And so he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to their companions and saying, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We mourn to you and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. So John did not drink any alcohol. He did not drink any grape juice. He did not even eat raisins and he was uh his hair was never cut he was a nazarite um uh, and from the day of his birth to the day of his death now when the people draw john the baptist they don't draw him correctly uh because his hair there would be seven probably seven different uh groups of hair that he would have because he had never had his hair cut. He was a Nazarite. And um, they could not touch any dead body. They couldn't uh, uh, even eat raisins or drink grape juice or anything like that. And that's the way John the Baptist was. And so if you're going to draw John the Baptist, please draw him uh, correctly. But that's uh, people do not understand how long his hair would have been, but it would have been put up in buns, uh, and so that he could get around easily and so on. But then it says, uh, For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. Now, John the Baptist, he didn't eat the regular food. Remember, his food was uh, locusts and honey. I don't know if he cooked the locusts or not. <laughs> the Son of Man came eating and drinking. So Jesus did and didn't drink a fermented uh, grape juice because he's told in the Old Testament by in Proverbs not to look upon the wine when it is red in the cup and moves itself right and so on. So Jesus, but he drank grape juice and uh, and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a wine bibber. Okay, so just like they made fun of John, calling him um, a demon, say that he's demon possessed, then they made fun of Jesus also. And even though he did not drink uh, fermented uh, grape juice or alcohol, look what they say of him a glutton and a wine bibber. Okay a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. Then he began to rebuke cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, Jesus did, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Corazon. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. So people are held responsible for the light that they have. And if you have heard the gospel more than once and you haven't received the Lord, you better get right with the Lord as quick as possible because if you were to die, you're going to be held more responsible, more accountable than people who have not heard the gospel. And so we we know that just because of these sayings here that Jesus is pointing out, 
that that's how God is going to judge people more uh, strictly. And it talks about how there will be degrees of punishment in hell. Not in those words, I'm paraphrasing, because Jesus said some will be beat with many lashes and others will be beat with fewer lashes. Well, they're in, right now, people are not in the, uh, in hell itself. They are in, as it said, Hades, which is, uh, in Greek, that means the place of the departed dead. And in Hebrew, it's Sheol, and that means the place of the departed dead. Like we say in English, they passed away. Okay, but uh, Jesus talked about it in Luke chapter 16. He, and he tells that there uh, were two compartments at that time. The one was Abraham's bosom or paradise because Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. So that's where Jesus would have gone and that's where he took the thief on the, that's where the thief on the cross would go, the one that turned to the Lord to save him. But uh, the other side, Jesus talks about when he, when Lazarus, the uh, beggar, uh, died and was taken into Abraham's bosom. There uh, he gets to see, and by the way, that's not a parable. Some people and think it's the Seventh-day Adventists that say that's a parable. No, it's not a parable because in parables, Jesus doesn't give names. But there he uses the name of Lazarus, and he's making it clear <clears throat> that Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom, but then there's a great gulf fixed. In other words, a long distance away or where they couldn't pass through to where the rich man was. He wasn't in hell because he's rich. He's in hell because he didn't repent. He knew the way of salvation because he even talks about he didn't want his brothers to go there. And he said, if somebody came from the dead, well, it's interesting because another Lazarus did rise Jesus raised him from the dead after four days and they wouldn't come to the people the religious leaders wouldn't come in fact they wanted to kill Lazarus the, uh, the one that had been risen from the dead but the rich man said uh, when he was in Hades or in torments so we know that it was a like a temporary hell like a prison before they go to the state pen after they've been in court and so on and uh, so it will be in the future, the, the great white throne judgment, the different degrees of punishment, and then they will be cast into that hell, eternal hell, eternal fire, eternal darkness, no attributes of God as being displayed like love and mercy and just, well, justice, because yes, and they will feel God's justice but they will not be allowed to be let out of there. And so that is what Jesus is saying, that these places that had the gospel, they're going to be held more accountable, uh, even more so than Sodom and Gomorrah, because uh, they didn't have the gospel shared with them. Now, a lot did some, evidently. Uh, it says that it vexed his righteous soul, and uh, the King James Version every day as he was there. But, and he's also in the book of uh, Hebrews and, and so on as a, a man of faith. But here we see that Jesus is telling, what's it going to be like? So people are not in that hell right now. They're in a different hell. They're in a temporary one. And so those that you see, like on Randy K and Ministries and that uh, there, and he says sometimes that uh, the great white throne judgment has not taken place and the people are in a temporary uh, hell situation. And But one day, then after the great white throne judgment, those that uh, have rejected the Lord and turned and away from repentance and would not receive would not turn from their sins to the Lord, they will be put in the lake of fire forever and ever. And as we said, being judged 
uh, uh, with degrees of punishment there. God will be just. You'll not be able to say to God, oh God, I would have done it this way. I would have done it. Th no, God will be right and he will be just. And so now is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Turn from your sin. Turn to the Lord to receive you and to save you. Get right with God while it is, it's their time. And then he goes on to say, and our time is just about up here, but oh. And then we uh, go back over here where we were. Uh, so the uh, degrees of punishment and hell there. And at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes. And he's speaking about his disciples, the 12 as babes, because they're just starting to learn what it's all about and so on. And even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son uh, wills to reveal him. So Jesus knows the Father intimately because he's one of the Holy Trinity. He has always been with the Father throughout eternity past. There was no beginning, and there will be no end. Uh, that where they will all they will be together. Only now Jesus has taken on a human body, and uh, revealing the heavenly Father through Him, and through His death and resurrection. <coughs> Come to me, all you who labor, and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. That's right. And uh, sometimes we think, oh, it's getting pretty hard, Lord, to, you know, to serve you in the times we're living in where they call... Uh, good is called evil and evil is called good and uh, so much wickedness and so on. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so we thank the Lord for that. And uh, uh, remember that when things seem to be getting going pretty rough. Now we've come to the end of our time today, so we're going to have a word of prayer. But if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you right now... Just say the short prayer to him, and I'll give you the prayer, and then we'll pray too. Uh, say something like this. Dear God in heaven, and you can be repeating that now if you would, if you've not uh, received Christ as your Savior. And uh, even the children at school, they will do this. But dear God in heaven, I know that I have sinned. I have done things wrong that I shouldn't have done. I have disobeyed you. And I know that I am a sinner in need of salvation. Right now, I want to ask you to come into my heart and life and take away my sin. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for my sins and the sins of the world. And right now, I invite you into my heart and life. To re I want to receive you, Lord, as my Savior. I believe that you rose from the dead the third day. And right now, I receive you into my heart and life. And just pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's have a word of prayer also. Thank you, Father, for this time we've had together. I just pray that you'll bless and this word as it goes forth and many souls will be saved. We thank you, Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Esther, it's good to see that you're on. 
The Lord bless you, sister. We'll see you guys, God willing, tomorrow.